pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, but with privilege to stand, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, David. Here. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Waltz. Here. Brenda Simmons. Here. Craig Scott. Here. Commissioners, any any additions or corrections to the agenda? Is there an agenda? Yeah. There's a hard copy over there. No? I'll get you. Do you have any additions or corrections? Anything all that's on here is a draft budget proposals and planning and zoning permit from schedule. No. Uh, item three, public comment related to agenda items. Is there is there any public comment in the room on agenda items? Thank you, sir. Any public comment on the phone? Item four, fiscal year 2024 budget draft, a draft budget proposals. Tim? Okay, you got the, the, I mean, there's nothing that's changed since Thursday on the general fund or on the special funds. There was a suggestion that came in from one of the departments uh, suggesting we look at retirement incentives. So I took a quick dive into that population of our employee base. We currently have 14 active employees who have both years of service and aid that would allow them to retire. Uh, some of them are uh, say better positioned than others uh, because of the with the age component where they are, they could uh, use social security and anyway have some fallback that way some of the other employees are uh, not so much they're just barely into the age years of service combination that would allow them to retire but um it's maybe a possibility it's not going to be something that's going to save millions by any stretch but what it will do is uh with turnover, assuming the positions are replaced, we'll replace those positions with persons who are at the entry level rather than the top of the pay scale. Other than that, the big hazard in this, a number of these employees are two-person and single-person on the health insurance plan. If we replace them with somebody on the family plan, that gets pretty expensive and tends to wash out any savings you might have. So it's a two-edged sword. If there is early retirement offered, it's offered to everyone who meets whatever that criteria is. So you can't go to one department and offer it and then not offer it to another. So if that uh, uh, age and years of service combination, whatever is selected that would, uh, you're going to incentivize somebody for early retirement, it would apply to anybody who meets those criteria. Any questions? Go ahead. Are, are any of those like three or four from one office? No, they're pretty scattered. Uh, one office would be, if everybody took it, would be devastated. It would be literally down to one. But um, Which office is that? Um, don't know if I want to publicly state it. All right, you can cover there. All right. Um, any of these people elected officials? Yes. Oh, so the Natchez... Our employees, they could be elected officials also. They can be, and they would. You would have to include the elected official again with that combination. So if you say, uh, if you've got you know, ten years of service and you're fifty-five or older, we would want to incentivize you to retire. Anybody who meets that criteria would then be eligible, including your elected officials who have, uh, particularly with the MERS DBs. You're talking about. Um, Divine benefit, that's where they get retirement the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Right. Then we will have to pay into that entirely from the county, and no one will be putting any money into that program. Right. Right. What happens if we don't replace them? What would happen? Then you would have the savings for that whole compensation package. So wages, benefits, all of it. Have you figured out how much that would be? I don't know how many would take. I'm just saying that they all took it. I did not calculate that number. Oh, we got to know that number. Should we find out first if, if that's an option? How many, I mean, how many would even I understand. To take it? What if they do take it and it's only a couple hundred thousand? Savings, you mean? Yeah, or less. It'd be less. Is, is it going to be worth it? You know what I mean? Right, those are the numbers we need. <clears throat> I 
again, you go from a single plan insurance wise, it's going to cost us more for the family. Right. It, it may cost us more before we're done mm -hmm. than what we got. Have you, and I apologize, I wasn't here Thursday. Um, have you had any opportunity since the meeting prior to that to meet? There was a lot of people that participated in that previous meeting. Did any, any did you have an opportunity to meet with anybody? Um, Tim, any department heads, elected officials, any ideas, any? I've heard, I'm gonna say from just about everybody, um, you know, since our first rollout of the uh, proposed budget, and uh, you know, everybody has had something constructive to put in. I'll look at this in my budget. Uh, let's try that. Uh, particularly with again, friend of the court and child care fund, they have been they, they're constantly looking at their numbers anyway. So they've done some what ifs back and forth with you know, if we get this many um, um, placements, this is what we'll have to do with the expenses. But then this is how the revenues would work out. So there's a lot of departments who are working that, and you have here tonight a proposed uh, fee schedule from planning and zoning. Uh, but right now, um, as far as any so anything magic, no, but departments are thinking about it and I expect we'll have an idea or two as we progress. Um, I also, the, I, I'm under the understanding we opted out of uh, paying for unemployment. Can you explain that to me, please? We had a program that this, we were one of only two counties in the state that were paying into unemployment every year, just paying into it. Uh, the other uh, 81 counties in the state are on a uh, program where if there are layoffs, that's when you pay in. You don't just pay you know, like it's insurance. Uh, so that's that's the difference there. So if there are layoffs, then there would be some cost to the county. If there are layoffs, would we be paying their entire unemployment? Let's say they collect $400 a week, we'll be paying $400 a week for every single buddy? I don't exactly know what the formula is on that, but I do believe our maximum will be somewhere in the neighborhood of $7,200, $7,300. No, per person a month? Per person. That's the entire uh, unemployment benefit. The entire period. I understand. But then can they get unemployment? I guess do they, I, what, what happens to the employee? Well, they would be able to apply for unemployment through the state and that's that's where again our participation then would kick in but you don't know what our cost would be on that uh 72 to 7300 dollars per employee a month no oh, total all, per employee. okay okay i already asked that you're right i already asked that sorry but then we no longer have to pay their health benefits correct right retirement to social security either Have we any any updates, Sheriff, on the jail? Um, I haven't heard anything. They were supposed to have a meeting yesterday, I think. I haven't heard anything back uh, but yesterday or today. I don't know. I haven't been involved. I thought it was yesterday they were going to have a meeting. But I haven't heard anything. Who had a meeting? Uh, Gladwin County. Oh, 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 this afternoon. Yeah. This afternoon. Yeah. Any? I haven't heard were anything. Were you there, Commissioner Wilty? No, I wasn't there. I just know the meeting was this afternoon. Any updates on is anybody, any commissioners had any more insight related to Gladwin County? Commissioner Scott? I, I did talk to a couple of commissioners. They're just waiting for numbers and they don't, they're not saying no. They're not saying no at all. I'm not saying yes either, are they? Hang on. Sorry. We I'm sorry. We hope so. Sure. Um, they're they're not saying no. I mean, I'm not hearing that. I was hoping that maybe we'd hear something from that meeting, but you know, I would imagine nothing's going to be decided in one one meeting at their level. Did you hear any time time frame? Because my understanding of the time frame was that it's quite extensive. Do you, did you get a different interpretation? Extensive. Yeah, they said they were in the beginning stages of discussing this. Well, they have the same budget deadline as we do for their county budget. It's what assumptions that they're going to rely on, I guess. 
just like we are. We rely on assumptions too. Maybe not assuming Gladwin, but we have to assume we have to assume all our revenues will come in just like we think they will. That's what we assume. That's what a budget is. I think it's a spending problem, not a revenue problem. Oh, I, I believe it is too, but the thing is, is when we talk a budget, we have to assume like like uh, Brex office, are they going to sell just as many uh, CPL permits as they did last year? Is, is the uh, is every department going to collect? Is the state going to pay us the money that they say they're going to pay us? Mm -hmm. We assume it. And it's all assumptions. So I don't know. I don't know anything other than they had a meeting today and I was hoping we'd hear something. But I mean, the commissioners met? Commissioners met or law enforcement or who, who met today? The commissioners met. Okay. It was a budget meeting, just like we're doing. Okay. I want to be clear on that. I didn't understand. Commissioner Wilson, do you have any insight? Uh, no. I, I mean, Commissioner Scott has spoke to I think it's three of the commissioners. Yeah. And of course, um, you know, they want to see more numbers. We knew that something that was going to happen overnight. Um, but a few of them seemed, you know, really optimistic to the possibility. They know that they're in a, a real bad position. The jail has substantial amount of work to do. They just had a sheriff millage that didn't pass. It's going to go up in November again. So there'll be more voters, and most likely that won't pass again. So they do have to make some decisions. They got the same budget as, as you know time frame as we do. So I'm still very optimistic the possibility that happened. I know Tim has been in touch with the uh, administrator over there. Um, but really, that's all I have. Um, it comes to glad one inmates right now. Any update on staffing in the jail levels and have you guys communicated there at all? As far as our current, we had discussed in quite a bit of detail at the two meetings ago. So I don't know if you want to call it downsizing or, or you were going to get more information. Have we heard anything? No, I haven't heard anything more. We did have the conversation at the last meeting where the jail lieutenant was here and talked about the blocks and how the jail is divided up, which is exactly what I thought uh, in terms of how it was done. Uh, so theoretically, if we were to close off two of those blocks, then we could downsize our staff. The savings that we would see in the recommendation I put forward would, would be realized. <clears throat> we do need to run this through Department of Corrections, but uh, having been through this once before with a significantly larger jail and a significantly uh, higher downsizing that we did, I'm pretty confident uh, in terms of what, what I proposed and, and whether it would work. I believe it would. But um, we still will need to go through the review from the state level just to make sure that our understanding of the ratios is correct. But again, my, I'm fairly confident that it will work out. So how do we gather that information? Sure, do you have anything to add to that? Well, before we go down that road, we've got to see if, see if in fact, the flat one is going to come our way. We don't want to reduce it if we know we've got people coming. So it's kind of in a, kind of in a dilemma right now. Until we hear from Gladwin, really, before we try to cut down our inmate size. You know, either we want the population or we don't. So we're just kind of in limbo right now. That's that's the tough part about this whole thing. I did have a conversation with the undersheriff last week. I understand DOC was over at our jail, and this was part of the analysis they were doing. I haven't really talked to him to really get an update since we last met here, um, but I expect that will be. In relatively short order, and I certainly appreciate what the sheriff is saying. You don't want to reduce if Gladwin ends up coming. So I'm hoping we get some kind of an indication from them relatively soon. Uh, I did put the administrator on notice there saying that we are up against the clock, that we're going to have to make a move, and we would hate to make this reduction if they're really going to come. So hopefully he'll relay that message to his board today as they're having their conversations. Have we provided them with a proposal? Uh, we, in just in um, general, uh, we had our meeting with the law enforcement committee here about a month ago. Uh, administrator has been in contact with me uh, a couple of times, just uh, looking at you know what numbers they have and uh, just you know bouncing ideas off from one another. 
but right now we really are in a wait mode to see what their board wants to do. If they don't even want to pursue this, we, we just need to know that. Hopefully they'll have that message come out of their meeting today. So we don't have anything in writing as far as what we're going to propose to them. This has primarily just been conversation. Right. Go ahead, Commissioner Simmons. Um, well, there is an item on our, on our budget that it takes uh, an enormous amount of money. Um, it's not a mandate. We have to have a sheriff, of course, but we don't have to have a jail. Um, I hate, hate to see it happen, but if everything falls through, that that's a big lump right there. It'd be $2.6 million. And would we save all of it? No, but we can transport like we used to, and we'd save a significant amount of money if we did that. I pointed out um, several years ago, and even on black and white, and we saved quite a sum of money several years ago. But um, the other commissioners chose to take a different route, and here we are. I hear you. The problem, not to say the problem, but we have the Road Patrol millage, so that doesn't make much sense when the voters vote to me. And this is my opinion. When the voters voted in a Road Patrol millage, now we have. More road services. patrol has nothing to do with the jail. You can still do your road patrol and still arrest people and trans take them to, let's say, Ross Common. You you can, however, that's an increase in of cost. This when hang, on, let me finish. When the voters voted for twenty four hour road patrol, the millage they wanted, they said yes on, and they can still have it. Agreed, but to me, that that doesn't make a lot of sense. When hopefully we're getting more. Arrests and but services. And according to Judge Beebe, we probably won't because then he's to go the other way and not on the on these charges uh, with making arrests and, and putting them in jails. So, and she doesn't see that going the other way anytime soon. That was according to our last meeting. With the legislative changes. Yes. So, but I mean, I. I don't like saying it, but you know when I when I'm looking at it, that's that's the option I see. And uh, road road militia should have nothing to do with that. You can still have your road patrol. You can still do what you're doing now. The only thing is, you won't be housing the inmates here. You'd be housing them someplace else. And uh, which is a higher cost to the county? No, not be not two point five million dollars. Do the math. We probably see about a million and a half. If that, if we could find somebody to take our inmates, just like we take somebody else's, just do the math. It's 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 a lot cheaper. I mean, that's why I was going. We should, we should have all those figures in front of us if, if we're asking for them. If, if this is an actual topic of conversation, then we need those. We need those what? figures. Seventy dollars per uh, seventy seventy inmates at thirty five dollars a day. Eight hundred ninety-four thousand dollars. That's the cost. So we save. And I asked this question five years ago, and they said, "Who in the who in the hell would be stupid enough to come and pick up our inmates and charge thirty-five dollars a day? We have to and pay and charge thirty-five dollars a day." And I says, "Oldemont does it every day. We did do every that. day. We were driving down to Genesee County for and charging thirty-five dollars a day." If Ogemaw County did it, why wouldn't somebody else do it? I guess maybe because we're stupid enough to do it, I guess. Bingo. Well, no matter no matter what, we got the bond payments. We got we need all them facts. We need but all the those bond figures. payments, not part of that. We need all those figures, but no matter what, we still gotta pay it. Well, I, I want to see those numbers. It's pretty easy to figure out, believe me. Very easy. There's the a number. We say we're a million a year. Four hundred thousand more is is now twelve hundred twelve million uh, one point two almost one point three million with the bond payment on top. Your your budget request this year is two point six. I think you can even if somebody didn't come and get them, I think you can afford transportation. Yeah. Got a million dollars to spend on transportation. 
I have a holding cell here, just like Oscoda like County does. Oscoda County's got two holding cells. You don't have to immediately transport them. You could have one person in here taking care of that. I don't know, just an idea. Can I show up here? Well, I think closing our jail is, is awfully aggressive. Um, I understand our jail costs us a lot of money. Um, I think that we need to get this report from the DOC to find out if we would staff our jail at 50%, what that would look like when it comes to savings for amount of workers we need in the jail. What I think we really need to do here, because call me extremely optimistic, I really think we still have a very good opportunity with Gladwin. And I'm I'm not a type of person to put all my eggs in one basket, but sometimes you just got to kind of go with something, give it a chance. If it doesn't work, we can adjust. Tim gave us a budget that we can give to the state. If it doesn't work, we can always, in two months, we can come back and look at this. We have a budget that works. I'm very optimistic that Gladwin is in a huge situation there. And I think there's a very good possibility that would work. We have a budget. I'd say we go with that budget. If it doesn't work in two months, we can change it. We're not married to this for a year. I mean, I've, I told you guys since I started, I've been extremely um, nervous about the sustainability of this county. And I realized the amount of money, you know, that we need to make this right. But we have an opportunity. Let's give it a chance. And if it doesn't work, then we make then we have to make the real hard decisions at that point. But I really think we should give this a chance. That's where I'm at. Commissioner Simmons? No, oh, there's a lot of thinking and maybes there. Um, I want the budget based on actual figures. And I I and I said it before and I'll say it again. We'd save money if we close that jail and shift our people out. Other counties are doing it. I mean, Oscoda County is doing it because it's like a lot cheaper than them. by sending them here. So it's a lot cheaper for them to send them here. It'd be a lot cheaper for us to send our someplace out. You know, I mean, we're 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 in a crunch right now, and we can't go on a maybe's and I thinks. You know, somebody can show you the figures, and I think you can show those figures a heck of a lot faster than you can show on the yeah, I thinks and I maybe's. We'd have to have some place hey, to take them. Hang on, guys. Commissioner that's, Simmons, that's right. you're Commissioner absolutely Simmons. right. We would. Commissioner Simmons, were you done? We would have to. You said right. You would have to, and you would have to start researching that now. We may not be able to do that in the, in the near term to have it done, but I would hope that six months from now it'd be done. Meantime, we got to pay. So what are we going to do? Well, then let's pass this budget that's presented to us, and in six months from now we can still do all the homework. We can still do all the homework in between, but at least we got something we can give to the state. We can do that. Well, then you got to you got to start naming names oh. who you're laying off. Then you have to. We can't make enough cuts and copy paper to make up this. If you don't want to go with the Gladwin deal, then start start with the list and start going down to your departments and how many people are going. I Commissioners, want... hold on, guys. Enough. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Commissioner Mayhew. The list of people, we ain't got enough. No, we don't. You you made a good point the other meeting. If you're not going to take any other kind of cut or any other kind of uh, move in the money, then you're right. You were absolutely right. You'd have to double that number. I think we're talking about a lot of important topics. Um, I think it's going to raise a lot of uh, eyebrows and red flags, and I think it's going to make a lot of people really nervous, um, as it should. I wish we had a lot more information in front of us about some ideas that we just threw around. These are some; these are going to affect a lot of departments, a lot of people. Um, I think we need facts and figures and numbers in front of us before 
any of this is decided. Um, I am not okay with approving this budget where we're at right now. Um, by any means, I, I thought at this point we would be a lot further. I, I was looking for, uh, you know, a possibly three year projection. I, 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 again, we're talking about jobs. We're talking about livelihoods. Uh, we're talking about a lot of things. I, I want numbers in front of us. Um, I think that's only fair to, to the people of this county. So I, I don't have any more information to make any more decisions. I want to know this the downsizing the jail. I mean, I, I you guys briefly discussed that if that's even a possibility. I'm understanding that inspection that went through last week was just the normal inspection that, that the state goes through annually. That there was nothing special to it. Um, maybe so I, I misunderstood. I'm going to check that. Maybe I misunderstood that, um, but I don't believe I did. Um, we got to know if it's even possible. We're throwing ideas out there and and raising lots of. Uh, <clears throat> turning lots of heads when we, we don't even know if it's possible. The 23 so, days. With that being said, yeah. 18 business days. How, you're right. I mean, Tim, I know you said that, you know, you, you're saying there, you feel confident. Well, we can't go on that either. I understand. How, I mean, I imagine this turnaround to even try to get that information is going to take some substantial time, isn't it? No. I, I would agree with Commissioner Simmons. I don't think it would. I can come up with that formula just based on my knowledge of how this, uh, how we how we're set up and how that jail is arranged. Um, going back to the chair's comments, you want to you see you want to see numbers. I've heard two things tonight. We want to see what the total cost is if these fourteen employees all took the incentivized retirement. Um, we'd have to talk about what we mean by incentivized. What are we? providing that incentive. And the other was, uh, what would this budget look like if all of our inmates were sent to other counties? I can certainly work up a draft to show you roughly where I think it would end up. Other than that, I need ideas. If you wanna see other numbers, mm -hmm. if you wanna see other scenarios developed, I need to know what they are. You know, I presented one to you and I believe will work, uh, but this isn't the only <laughs> set of ideas. So any other ideas that you might have or any other options you want to pursue, let me know. I'm happy to give you the scenario. How much will that say up, save us with uh, layoffs if we've got to pay the $7,300 of unemployment benefits? How much would that save the county with that idea that you have there um, that you presented to us? I have a copy of that somewhere. Um, how much money will that save us? An actual figure. That's going to be more like your three-year plan. The effect you're going to see is down the road more than you'll see an immediate effect of some sort, but down the road, as if we were if these are replacement positions, then down the road we'll see savings because we brought in people at lesser. I'm not homes. talking about the retirement incentives. I'm talking the actual and the original idea of the un. Uh, of the employees, the part time, I believe it's part time employees. There was nine. What was nine, it? Was there? Nine full time and the entire part time in two of these units. That total savings was 542518 That's a for sure number with paying the $7,300 of unemployment That's benefits. That whole package, right? And also Gladwin County, I mean, if there's not even we're throwing a number in, out there. Uh, shouldn't there be some some plan put together? I, I guess we came up with a million dollars. Is that correct? What was the figure? Yeah. Was a, I programmed in or put, put the placeholder in at a million, and we base that number on what they've already, what they're spending now uh, on their jail, roughly how many inmates they have. Uh, and they're really running about the same we are, maybe a little bit less, but they were over two million a year. So we're only projecting half of that coming here. Has anybody provided that uh, neighboring county with that figure of a million dollars? Actually, it's with our conversation that we initially had with them, that's how we developed that number. So we came into the meeting prepared, knowing what their budget already looked like through their audits that they report each year. They all but confirmed everything that we uh, projected. We have not sat down with that county to say this is what we would expect. 
This is the amount of money. We haven't gotten to that point. So this is all right now just simply estimates based on the information we have. We don't know if they would want us to come to their holding facility and bring inmates here or if they would transport them. Uh, we don't know a whole lot about the logistics, about how that's going to connect. So we would still have to work out those details. But we're taking roughly half of what we know they're spending now on an annual basis and projecting that as revenue coming to this county to house their inmates. Any other facts and figures you're asking Tim to gather? I, I have a question. Mr. Simmons. You said some of those people were um, elected elected officials. Um, yeah. Now, there is, my understanding is there is a, a cost to that position. Uh, just, You've just been elected now, so you get this much. But the position pays this amount of money, so I don't see the advantage of doing that yeah. with the elected you're right you set the wage and that's what it is for the term that's right of the office so you don't have somebody now coming in at a lower rate that's right for the electeds and as i recall there were two under that 14 that would fit that but if you do open up uh, an early retirement incentive you do have to open to those elected officials as well oh that's right i understand that yeah. I can't imagine they would take it. Thoughts or ideas? Can we go back to our, our list of our um, our alternative budget plans? We had our reduction goals. Um, you know, we do have a number of these, and I know it's not going to, you know, save us from not having to make some real big decisions. But, I mean, there's, there's a number of these items here that I think we could agree on to move forward with, couldn't we? Like what? Well, we talked about you know moving the road patrol on our list. Our list yeah, moving the road patrol. Go ahead. And the, there's a number of them here. And then the shifting of position. The I P, don't know if the you PA. Let, let him finish. The PA software being bought with ARPA funds. And then we had the 25% uh, West Branch Road City Schools, and then the Woodmore Prescott Schools. You know, I mean, again, I mean, this isn't going to save the day, but it, it adds up. It helps. You know, the, aren't these some items that we could? Sheriff, do you have an opinion on this? Have you, have you had, can you come up so everybody can hear you? Because this is a lot of, a lot of money. And because how I'm understanding this, I, I understand the figures, but I still, to me, it's just. I don't have that paper. Moving money. But. But this is this is my professional opinion on this on, on moving people around. We're finally where we need to be right now. We're full staff. We're giving the people what they want right now. They voted for the services they're getting writing not right now. If we take and move them people to that other millage, we're reducing three three officers. Right, three are getting laid off. What that's going to do is have me lay off all the part-timers, they're gone, which means I gotta take correctional staff to do the transport. They're getting paid top dollar. There's gonna be overtime. You cut three three officers out of that, what we have, full staff. That means I gotta bring day shift up to night shift. I gotta, I gotta have a night car, because that's what we promised the people. That's gonna short me on days. People call in sick. People take time off. I'm going to have to fill that with overtime because they are extremely, and, and, if, and I know it sounds like a broken record, they are extremely busy during the day and they are extremely busy at night. So if I get a night car, night, night guy that calls in sick or can't make or whatever, I got to bring somebody from days up to nights and try to do that shuffle is difficult. I can't take that one guy and set him in the office and say, no, we're not going to have a night car tonight. I can't send him out there without a backup. We can't depend on the state police. We have to depend on ourselves for backup because the state police is carrying four counties. They, they are overloaded too. And I said at last meeting is that there's things out in Ogemaw County that, that are pretty dangerous, and, and, and I don't want nobody be scared about or whatever, but there's things that we handle 
And if we're not there, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty worried about it. If we lose our patrol, if we start shuffling bodies, people are going to get wind of that, <clears throat> and we're going to try to get this reelected. This, this millage gone again ain't going to happen. It will not happen. I guarantee you, it will not pass. It, it passed last time, but I thought it passed a little bit better than it did. But the comments that I was hearing is that we'll get the money for the millage, and then you're going to take away from the general, and then pretty soon we're going to be millage-based, and we're going to get some service. They brought that up, if you guys remember. And that's exactly what we what, what the proposal is. We're doing exactly what the people are saying that would happen. They get wind of that. That will not pass. That will not pass. We're giving them very best services right now. And we could even get better, but we're getting there. Tim, do you have a, oh, I'm sorry. When we, I'm just, I'm really concerned about it because our people need protection. With all the, with all the, the, the drugs that's around, the mental health issues, mental health issues is huge. Um, if we don't have the people to respond to help these folks out, it's not going to be good on our sheriff's office, and it's not going to look good on you folks. Is that, if I'm understanding this correctly, and we're taking the money, explain what you're, what you're proposing here, from the millage to... Let's get back, back to what Commissioner Wilsey was talking about. The first two items on the list, the one would be to move the road patrol grant position out of the general fund in its entirety and put it into the road patrol millage fund. Now, that means the grant monies would go to the road patrol millage, as would the additional 63000 in expenses that would take that out of the general fund. And so that position would then be part of that road patrol millage grouping. We would still segregate it so you could see exactly what expenses were attributed to that grant and which ones were attributed to the general road patrol millage. But now you'd have that position there. We're also proposing taking one of the lieutenant positions and moving it over to the road patrol millage fund as well. This is a high dollar position only because we have the, both of our lieutenants are in the DB plan and there's quite a cost that comes to DB. Uh, so that's a significant expense though that would be moved over to the road patrol millage. And then what we added last week was 25% uh, of each of our uh, school resource officers moving them over to the road patrol millage for the time that they're not in school year. So while we're saying to do this, we would have to reduce the staffing at the road patrol millage by the three least senior officers. We're replacing those positions with two and a half bodies, equivalent of two and a half body. So we're losing literally a half time person under that formula. It really just is moving a lot of the expenses out of the general fund and putting it over in the road patrol millage fund. But those are eligible expenses as well uh, in terms of what the millage question was that was before the voters. So while I, I understand that, that people are saying, well, this is what's going to happen. Yeah, they're exactly right. That is what's happening here. But as far as the level of service goes, yeah, it's not going to be easy, but we shouldn't see a huge reduction in the level of service in terms of what road patrol millage is putting out into the county. It's just a matter of how we're showing it in our budget. But that that lieutenant that you're talking about, that position of $203,138, that lieutenant is not road patrol. They're not out patrolling the road. I, I'm sure they're assisting. I don't know what other job is, but they're not actually road patrol. Am I, am I not correct there? They, they cover road patrol too, and they do a lot of administration work, which is, we have to have that done. You know, our checks and balances has to, has to check out. Um, we get anything on the road. If there's a lot of extra work out there, yeah, they, 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 they're, they're suited up and they go out, they help. So I guess, are you comfortable with saying, moving that $203,000 to road patrol? To road patrol well, what, the bottom line is, the bottom line that I see is three bodies are gone. You take three bodies out of a full staff. We're, we're at full level right now. It's it's not going to be good. But Tim's it's, actually it's saying two and a half. I guess how, I'm not. I don't. Not, I don't know how you got the two and a half. I, I'm not either. Yeah, I, it's just a matter of shifting. You're taking these bodies that are in the general fund now. You're moving them to the road patrol millage fund. It doesn't equate to the full three, three least 
seniority employees, but it is two and a half roughly FTEs. So you're down a half an FTE. Uh, and as far as uh, uh, the other, I mean, it's depending on how you're just shaking this out. What is the definition of road patrol? What happens? Is it just officers on the road? I don't think it is. I think it's the whole gamut of what they do when they're, while they're out there. It really, it's the, the function of the sheriff uh, deputy who's out there. That is the road patrol function, right? Yeah. So we're anything. not really shifting and you know, mm -hmm. saying that, well, this doesn't belong over there. We're doing that same work, just different faces that are doing the work. And yes, it is a small reduction in the road patrol millage. Yes, it is a higher reduction in the sheriff office budget on the general fund. But we're at a point where we've got to do something. And yeah, like I said, it's not going to be easy. I totally agree with you. And I cannot imagine the headaches that's going to create for scheduling. But at the same time, if we don't have the funds to pay everybody, we can't hire them. We can't have them on the roster. How my biggest question is how we how are we going to eliminate overtime? You know, right now we're having overtime issues that's being brought up. And, and if you cut people back. Services has to be done. If 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 we get a call for duty, we can't just say no. We'll handle it tomorrow. We can't. We got to handle it. That's it, this public safety. This public safety is huge, and I realize it costs a lot of money to do that. But you know what? It could save lives out there. It costs more than we have now. Everything's costing more than we have. We don't have enough money to pay for everything. So if we don't do anything in the sheriff's office or corrections, I mean, we can march every department had an elected official in here. Maybe we're going to save forty thousand dollars someplace that nobody nobody can cut. We did this in sixteen. Sixteen, we went all through the building. The only department that didn't get cut was the sheriff's office and the and the corrections. Yeah. They retained the same number of people. Public safety. Huh? I, I agree I with say. by looking at this. I do agree with the to move the twenty five percent from the two resource officers. I, you know that 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 time of year when they are on the road patrol. I, I do I do agree that that's where that funding should come from one hundred percent. That twenty six and that twenty. That's how I'm understanding that. Correct. So the the summer months, they are they are patrolling roads. In my opinion, that is for that. I think again, I agree with you, Sheriff. If we start making some significant cuts, the chances of that millage. Um, not passing in the future will be quite high and, and there will come a lot more um, positions. Commissioner Simmons? Yeah, so, oh, when you talk about the cuts, were, was there any cuts done in the, in the district to the circuit courts? I, I don't, I don't remember. remember. I don't remember. You were here. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. Cuts there but, Some people would retire yes, and then they hire them back, contract them back. Yes, district court lost one position. District they run two less employees than we do in the district court last half But you got to understand, a lot of the funding is 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 not our general fund in the courts. I understand that. Yeah. Yep. So you know we're only talking about things affected by the general fund, like like transit. Now Roger brought up transit a couple of meetings ago. Transit's not really in the general fund because it has its own funding sources. Yes. You know, this is what we're saying about road patrol. Road patrol is set. It's already set. We're not going to cut the money out of road patrol. Right. Because that's a millage. It's already set. That's good. Yeah. But it's this general fund over here. Our expenses are here and our revenues here. And we got to bridge that gap. <clears throat> you know, building department, they have their own funding. You know, we, we're not going to cut it, cutting them doesn't do anything right. for the general fund. Exactly. You know, we're wasting our breath talking about transit, about building department, about a lot of the, a lot of the courts. Most of that money from the courts is not in our general fund. We also, by looking at these numbers, we also have to remember that we transferred during this this budget, we transferred two hundred thousand dollars, I believe, the treasury reported from the commissary fund to the general fund, and that came from corrections. I mean. Right. The, the biggest thing too, if you lay off one person at, at my agency, part time has to go. That's the first thing it's got to go to. And that's got to be filled. We've got to 
got to have transports, Tuesdays and Thursdays, court runs, doctor's runs, and you're going to pay the high dollar for, for the transports. And there, there will be overtime. Got three bodies out of out of what we got now. It's going to be there's going to be overtime. We have to fill that shift at night. We have to. We cannot set the 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 minute we set somebody at the desk say we don't have a partner for him. That's when things are going to happen, and we're going to have a responding unit. That will not go good. That will not go go good for any of us. Well, I I think we 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 need some more information in front of us. Some facts, some figures. Hopefully, Gladys County reaches out and let us know what our meeting went today. Um, hopefully, you're able to, to figure out at the jail if that's even feasible. I mean, to continue that conversation of downsizing it or I'll, I'll just or, dig it tomorrow. I'm going to, I got some notes here. We need some more information very quickly. Very quickly. Denise? I got a hold of Marcus during Gladwin. She said their meeting, after meeting today, it didn't come up at all. Their budget the meeting? It didn't come up at all. We didn't get that far. We didn't get that far. We had a meeting, but it didn't come up at all. We didn't get that far. Hmm. I have a contact I can reach to up over there too. We have a meeting again Thursday. Is that correct? Are we going to have more information? Well, it's regular call. Yeah, Thursday morning. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yep. And then on um, the eleventh. And then it's a department head meeting, is that correct? Well, it's now a cow meeting. So, but we're also at a nine o'clock, and so that'll be on the 11th, we'll have one at nine o'clock. And then also on the 12th, nine o'clock, and then we'll have um, the 14th a drop dead date, isn't it? 14th just the hearing date. That's I know. And then we have another meeting on it. So we got meetings on 11th, 12th, and 13th. And the one on the 13th at 5.30 in this building. But the other ones are at 9 o'clock in the morning. The other okay. three. And the regular meeting is the 14th, correct? That is correct. At 9 in the morning. I, I won't be here the 11th. Pardon me, please? I will not be here on the 11th. That's a morning meeting. Right. Okay. We'll see if we have any more information for Thursday. Can't make a decision on any of this. I can't. Any of you come up with any thought that you want to pursue about you know and uh, see what happens. I think did you did you forward that email to all of the at will employee the list of all the at will I think Kelly, I don't know, Kelly emailed it to me, somebody emailed it to me, Kelly or Tim, the all the oh, yeah. employees. Did you guys all get it? Yeah. Okay. Did you get that email? I mean, look at my emails. I've been doing everything. Okay. Um, good. Are you going to look at the, the figures as far as um, what the savings would be if the, if the jail were closed yes. and we had transport? Okay. Yes. Along with the cost savings of downsizing the, the corrections department as well? Yes. That's even feasible, what yes. that savings would be? It's built in here, but I'll break it out so you can see it. Okay. All right. Please. Any other ideas? Madam Chairman, that's the only thing I see is the astronomical thing that costs a lot of money. What we can see is is the jail. That's that's the only thing I see. I hope I'm not walking around with blinders on, but I can't I can't pass a budget on a meeting. There you go. Mr. Mayhew. Uh everybody at the jail, if they downsize, they gotta pay them seventy five hundred bucks. Give or take, yeah. Depending on the wage. Yeah. Seventy three hundred dollars for the unemployment benefit. Yeah. Anybody that's right. laid off. Like, how long ago was that? Did we do that? Did we pass a resolution and all of that for that? I, I don't recall that. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. yeah that okay. Was, um, gosh, it was I'm trying to think of what triggered it. Oh, it had to do with uh, the ongoing uh, administrative uh, hearings we were having in Lansing over something. I think it happened in 2018. 
volunteers. Yeah. The volunteers. Are right. the volunteers yeah. Right. So as that was getting resolved, so we, and we had a bill, we had a constant bill from right from uh, Michigan Works about it, and whatever they are. And, and in that case, that particular case, we were being uh, told we didn't pay enough because some of the volunteers they considered as employees, and so that's that's another reason to do it. Uh, this I forget what the exact terminology was, but to do it on the pay as you go, I guess, for lack of another word. Uh, because they will scrutinize that. And if they believe one of your volunteers passes the test for uh, being a full-time employee, they will not only want that money recovered, they'll also probably fine us. So this eliminates that from happening. So it's a one-time cost of $7,300 per employee. Right. And I don't think it all comes at once. I think what happens is the individual employee applies for the unemployment and the state will bill us for our maximum period, I think it was about 13 weeks. Uh, so it won't all come as a lump sum bill. And then with the idea that perhaps that employee gets employment somewhere else, then that stops. Right. You, know, you don't want to pay up one dime bill because if they go out and get another job in two weeks, we only, we only owe for, for the two weeks. We yeah. don't owe for the whole period. That's correct. That's what that, that was the whole problem. We were paying ahead of time, paying for everybody's period ahead of time and and we weren't paying anybody off and we kept paying in. Brian, do you want to come on up? You have planning and zoning permit people. Unfortunately, this is not going to solve any of the problems. <laughs> this honest. is more of a more of a reduction in expenditures than, than a revenue stream source. But um, so periodically, I do look at the the cost for the permits and what we're charging for permits, and um, spell them out for you too. Also, at the very bottom would be more of a worst case scenario if if um, more expenditure reduction needed needed to be. For planning and zoning services that are provided to the county municipalities. So, um, and they're a little bit outdated, probably need to be updated a little bit. Um, my opinion, and, and it may, you may differ on that, is that the, the cost of those permits should support themselves, um, shouldn't be, that should be the costs associated with those permits should should cover the permit fee should cover those costs and that should be for by the applicant in these cases these are all these are all permits that are required for applications of whether it's a zoning permit or a special use permit or a site plan review or a map amendment um, probably the biggest disparity we have is down there on the zoning board of appeals for a variance request um, those the current fee for that and, and the proposed or the the estimated cost for that that meeting is they're they're out of whack. If you can see that there, and that would be one meeting um, that that actually was raised. You remember when we raised that? It would have been twenty, probably 18, 2019, I believe. Oh, yeah. It used to be two hundred fifty dollars for a variance request. Um, that was bumped up to four hundred. Fees haven't really. The estimated cost of that meeting really hasn't changed a ton since then, but um, they are a little bit, that one is a little bit out of whack. So um, that's more informational for you. Um, I do believe the zoning permit fee has not changed since 2009. Um, but unfortunately, the county is not um, <clears throat> immune to inflation and, and everything else that goes on the cost, the rising fees and cost of everything as well too. So. Um, that particular fee would be more in line of what neighboring municipalities are charging as well, too. So, so a lot of the other ones Somebody to require site visits also. Correct. And correct you don't even correct. have that in there. Correct. And yet mileage and time, my time for it as well, too, is not compensated within those fees as, as well. So the proposed side, the current side, obviously, is what we currently charge. Proposed side would, would for the most part, get you to an even point or close to it. Um, it's not gonna produce a ton of revenue, um, but the, but those could be increased as well too, as need, as need be. 
I've not got the feeling from the board in the past that they're looking to treat that as a revenue stream. So that's why I'm just kind of giving you the cost for the cost. Right. People are asking for a special, a special permit of some sort, and they right. should they should have to pay the cost of the the per diems, the hearing, everything like that. It's renting postage, 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 and and ad advertising. Now it's just gone berserk. Yeah, postage is up there. Usually, postage is an is an, a huge thing in here, but the advertising, advertising is um, just that business ads themselves are just. Correct. Well, I right. think just about doubled on yeah. it. You get into some of the map amendments and text amendments. Those can be very large bills, um, depending on how much of an ad I have to put in the newspaper for it. Especially if a, a map amendment or a text amendment is approved, then that could be a large ad in the paper. That could be a two hundred dollar bill by itself. But but for the most part, that is a very accurate. Information on what our costs and what our and what our fees are right now. This is comparable with with neighboring counties. Pretty comparable. Um, further you go down state, the more these fees get. Right. Um, quite a bit more. Um, it's not uncommon for a lot of those to start at a thousand dollars and go up from there. So, um, so fortunately, we we we're we're not going to have those types of costs involved, but. Um, some of the new ones here, like this, um, the special use side, solar and wind energy, um, those are going to be relatively new for us here soon. Um, if the Planning Commission does allow those to, to happen in the agricultural districts, then that current fee <clears throat> and the information involved with that is more in line with what cell towers are. Um, unfortunately, cell towers were capped by statute. We're not allowed to do more than a thousand dollars or the actual cost. So solar and wind, I have a pretty good feeling that we'll get to that point as well, too. So uh, I would caution there, there is legislation pending that would take that out of the local control category and make it a state. Yep. Uh, yep. Permit. yep. So, and that's actually looking fairly likely to occur. And I and I will be surprised if it's not telling yeah. the truth. Um, <clears throat> South Tower, a lot of that control has been taken away from us as well, too. So um I, I see that happening very soon rather than later. But in the in the interim, well, those last, are going to be decisions we have. Last one we we were obligated to approve it, really, by by government. Yeah, really. The, the concerns that the the public had for it were concerns we can't use in our decision making process on the cell towers. So that's unfortunate. Um, it's happening more and more with a lot of things now. The vacation rentals are. Um, there's legislation that's been in in the government for for four years now. That's going to hamper our ability to 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 um, limit those. Um, cell towers is already there. It, it's coming for solar and wind. I think there's one for um, gravel and mining operations right now. That's in front of um, the legislature as well too. Um, those local decisions permitting and will be taken away from us on those as well too. So. Um, but while we have them, when 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 did you want this to take effect? What was your goal here? Ideally, fiscal year, even calendar year would be would be fine as well too. Um, I look at where am I permitting from a calendar year, um, standpoint. The report that report that I give you folks every January, February, the um, the annual report for planning and zoning. That's usually. Uh, it's done on a calendar year bank basis. Um, so it might make more sense to implement, like, since the zoning permit increase after the calendar year, um, to give, give people a little bit notice. But um, quite honestly, could be done for the fiscal year as well, too. I, I, I'd say let's put this on the agenda for the next regular meeting mm -hmm. for a resolution and then make it effective. Next month, yeah. October one. Things go up. It doesn't matter when they go up. Sure. Sure. Questions, comments, Commissioner Wilty? Anything for Ryan? Um, no. Well, thank Commissioner, you. Commissioner Simmons? Should no. you? Anything at, else, Commissioner? At the last road commission meeting that Charlie and I attended, they they were raising some fees also at road abandonment. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you.
Uh, public comment. Any public comment in the room? Any public comment on the phone? Our next meeting is Thursday at 9 a.m., correct? All right, can I? Can I oh, go ahead. Um, so, you know, with 23 days, again, I know I've said this once, but I just ask all of you guys just to think a little bit about the fact, again, 23 days, these are major, major decisions. None of us want to do it, cut jobs. None of us want to do that, but we have major decisions to make. But 23 days is not enough. We have some things out there that we need time on. We have a budget that we can give to the state. We're not married to it. We're not married to it for three months, four months, six months, a year. I know it's a maybe, but we have a budget that we can put into the state. We can review it after two months. And if it isn't going to work, then we have, then we can make some hard decisions. But we have 23 days. I really, really want you guys to think about that. And I, we need more time. We need more time. Anything else, commissioners? Motion to adjourn. Motion. Six thirty-one. Adjourn. Whatever that. Shot contract. Perfect. Mm.